Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. No, we're not in the EEV blog lab today. We're here in Doug's shed. This is my mate Doug, and he's an analog and power specialist, and he likes to blow shit up. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go for an overview. What have we got here, Doug? Okay, this is a rather nasty capacitor discharge power supply. Uh, it's designed for doing ocean bottom profiling. Its principle is to charge up a rather large capacitor to anything up to about 4.2, 4.3 kilovolts, and then discharge it through SCRs into the load. Uh, the discharge is very rapid, uh, sub one millisecond. Nice. Principle of operation, we have an auto transformer driving two, you guessed it, microwave oven transformers. Beauty. The reservoir capacitors are in there. Down here we have, unfortunately hidden by the little mini fans, uh, five series high voltage SCRs, 1200 volt rated. So we get 6 kV worth of SCR supporting the 4.5 kV operation mm -hmm. and corresponding uh, flyback diodes. If you're dumping a large capacitor into an inductive load, you certainly want to have flyback capacitors, otherwise you form a resonant circuit which will keep on giving you high voltages for a very long time. Absolutely. Plus a whole batch of control circuitry. So, there you go. That's it. This, incidentally, is the runt of the litter. This was yep. first of its kind. This one stores and releases 400 joules of energy. Nice. Uh, I have completed another one which uses switch mode transformers to do mm -hmm. the capacitor charging, rated at 2 kilojoules. Excellent. It's nasty. Nasty piece of work. And what's on the front? Okay, we have cooling fans going in. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, ventilation outlet there and two voltmeters one of which reads the uh, peak voltage stored on the reservoir mm -hmm. capacitors the other one gives you a reading of the instantaneous voltage so the needle wiggles around a lot quite a lot with each discharge yep the amount of throughput power of this thing is pretty frightening it'll do four 400 joule discharges per per second awesome sorry uh, per second Hang on, four per second, no, three per second. So uh, total throughput power, 1200 watts. Nice. All right, yeah. let's blow some shit up. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Here we go, we're running at 200, uh, 200 joules at the moment. Yep. Now, our poor little dummy resistor is made with some resistance wire other than nichrome. Near as I can figure, there's no insulation between each of the windings on that wire wound resistor that relies on an oxide coating on the wire itself. Yep. Now at 200 joules we just get occasional breakdown between windings in pretty consistent positions. As the resistor heats the insulation breaks down further and we get more and more sparking at a variety of locations. Go for Let's it. push the envelope a little bit. Let's go to 400 joules. All right, 400 joules. That's the max that this little beastie can do. Yes. Wow, that's really loud. Pop. What we have here is a small uh, inductor from a loudspeaker crossover. Not so small, maybe. We are going to place on top of it a chunk of aluminium. We are going to put a pulse of energy through the coil. The coil will induce a corresponding EMF in the and circulating current in the aluminium, which will be violently repelled. Let's see how high we can chuck it. Awesome, and how much does that weigh? 800 grams. 800 grams. All right, let's do it. Let's see if we can shoot this sucker. Ready? We're about to shoot it. I got the helmet on. Two, Go! One. Woo! Here it comes. Here it comes. Bang. Awesome.
All right, let's have a look. We've opened it up. We get a lot of flash around here with corresponding vapor deposition over there. Ah, you gotta love a cheap Chinese screw. <laughs> Thanks for that, Doug. As the actress said to the bishop. Not as much damage as we thought. No. But the PCB well, certainly ruined. Because yeah. there's no um, input protection on that. There's no mobs or anything like that. So that's what you expect. I'm not being gentle here. All right. And well, I'm that's in... entirely disappointing. We've barely got a little bit of flash. Yeah, right here. not much has happened at all. That is very disappointing. We need more jewels, Doug. Okay, let's apply the jewels to another item. Let's try another one. Here. Oh, yeah. Three, two, one. Whoa! Are we happy now? We're happy. We should have got that in high speed. <laughs> You are not going to believe this, there is still a decimal point alive on the LCD there, screen. There is a decimal point! That's fantastic! <laughs> and it completely blew it off the case, look at that. Oh, here we go. There we That's go. That's what we're talking about. That's what we want. That's brilliant. Oh, well <laughs> done. Right, let's try a few more, shall let's we? Let's do a few more. Woohoo! Oh, there used to be a fuse in there. Oh, there was. Look at that. <laughs> wow, fantastic. <laughs> okay, we're now doing the JCAR QM 1340, four and a half digit meter. And let's see what this sucker can do. It's on volts range. Let's try it. 400 joules, go. Oh. Ah. Hey. Woohoo. Awesome. Oh yeah, smoke. You probably can't see it on camera, but smoke is coming out of that. That is awesome. Oh, I can smell it. Oh yeah, I wish this was smell of it. I love the smell of electronics in the morning. Morning. Hey, there it is. There it is. Oh, check out the case. Oh, look at the blast on the case. <laughs> oh, we didn't get that one on camera. That was a premature fire and it actually blew. The it knob blew, off. <laughs> it blew the knob off the original Fluke 70 series. Bugger, we didn't catch that. That was awesome. It blew the knob off. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to try a proper shot. Okay, let's try a proper shot. I'm still recording. Go for it. Okay, this is another Digitech JCAR cheapy recording Digitech QM1524. Go for it. Satisfactory. Satisfactory. Awesome work. The uh, Fluke 28 Series 2. It's my drop test model. Okay, we're back in the lab and I've got a box full of busted meters. Let's check them out. Still smell them. Beauty. Here's the original Fluke 70 series from the 1980s. These aren't cat input protectors, so they're a very old design. And as you can see, the MOV down here, the metal oxide varista, which is used for the input protection, they're just blowing to kingdom come. And that's what generated all the internal pressure enough to actually blow this knob clean off. But as you can see, there's really no other damage there at all. It's just taken out the protection devices exactly what they're designed to do. I've just taken out the board and there is one more device here which has violently exploded. I'm not sure that what that was. It looks like a resistor, um, but it's just a charred black remains. It could be a fusible resistor or something like that. Here's the El Cheapo JCAR Digitech QM1524, about a $20 meter. It's got no input protection. It's pretty crap. And as you can see, it's really blasted this completely black, all the residue in there. And this track here has actually lifted, is peeled straight off. But that's what you get with these cheap meters. They're just not designed to handle those surges. And here's the cheapy uh, JCAR JTEC QM1340, four and a half digit meter. And let's check this one out. This one had, you know, the same sort of thing on the back. It's basically got no input protection, so it's all blasted and charred around here. It just couldn't handle it at all. It's completely burnt. This one actually smoked. Um, and if you look at the top side here, you can actually see, um, I, well, you may not be able to see that, but some tracks have, have peeled right off in there like that. And this tiny little uh, pocket El Cheapo Digitech JCAR one actually survived 
reasonably well, probably because there's like nothing in it, really. It just blew a couple of tracks and that was it. Got this little little cheapo five ten dollar Zia Lee. I'm not even sure how you pronounce that, but uh, as you can see, it um, we've got some uh, arcing flash over on the uh, on the contacts in there, and pretty much completely charred bottom, and the fuse completely blown out of it, and it's toast. And let's check out the famous Fluke 28 Series 2. This was the one I drop tested, bused, and basically. Uh, tortured so there's pre-existing damage from that but as you can see it blew the arse end out of the mobs here which is exactly what is supposed to happen uh, this resistor didn't blow off I believe that's actually um, was weakened from the drop test so there's no um, wonder that sheared off this mob here is actually gone and there you go so apart from that I mean it's got some blackening around here and it looks like it has actually um, some sustained some heat damage to the board here, but um, generally it failed really quite safe and it didn't arc over a second time It just blew once and that was it you were fully protected That's what you get with a proper cat 3 rated meter So there you go. That was awesome fun. Doug's unit only tested at about 4 kilovolts Which is about half of the 8 kilovolt rating that they test for Cat 3 on multimeters. And as we saw, the, a proper Cat 3 rate of meter like the Fluke 28 survived no problems at all and it failed safe. Whereas the other meters, they smoked and they burned and you got the impression that the damn things would catch on fire just like that Gosson Metrowatt video if you overloaded the things a bit more and left them on for a bit longer. So another reason not to touch the cheap meters. See you next time.